Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jillian Berry and today we have an incredible guest in store for you guys. We have Karen Calabres. Many of you know who she is already. She has actually even been interviewed by Oprah before. She is amazing. She is an over 50 year vegan and she has been raw vegan for over 40 years now. She is also a restaurateur and she is one of the longest standing raw food restaurants in all of America. And she's amazing. So let's get right into it. Hey, Karen, how's it going? Oh, what? Can I just carry you around and you introduce me? Thank you so much for that. Yes, it's a wonderful day. You know, what's really exciting for me is I'm in a new space. I'm doing something new. I'm starting all over again. And I don't know, when people ask me, well, Karen, how do you stay so vibrant, you know, still uh, all these years? Well, of course, it's my plant based diet. Yeah. That one, of course, is cleansing and detoxing my body. Of course, it's yoga, it's meditation. But you know what the number one thing is that I do? It's staying purposeful, having having a purpose in life, having a passion, something that you can follow and continue, you know, being of service. So I put that in as much with the food I eat is that I stay relevant. It's about staying relevant as long as you're alive. So it's 75. I'm opening up another restaurant next month. Um, I just opened up a wellness spa. I moved from the city to the suburbs. I lived in a city in a glass house for like 30 years. I'm on the land now growing my vegetables. So, you know, at 75, I'm starting all over again and I couldn't be happier. Yeah. And you look amazing. Like, and you know what? I, I just love how you're just creating so much at 75, you know, all the raw vegans I interview in their seventies, eighties, nineties, they're so active doing podcasts, interviews creating like a life they love that they're passionate about. And I love it. And how do you think if, so, how do you think somebody can find their passion and purpose if they're feeling lost and they don't know like what they're passionate about or what their purpose is? Well, you know, I, I truly believe in, and it really is, it gets to sound like a one note thing with, me, but I think if you take the time to cleanse and detox your body, which I've been cl teaching cleansing and detoxes for about four years, I learned uh, from the best, Dr. Ann Wigmore, who started the whole raw movement. She was my teacher and mentor. And um, what I have found is if you take the time to clean out all the toxicity, we all know what's right. We all know what we're supposed to do. We know the purpose, but so much gets crowded and, and, and it's like a wall is grown around you. And it's the way life is going in terms of the way you eat, the way you think, the way you sleep, what you're ambitious. So when you take the time to clean out your body, which I have been doing consistently for over 45 years, even though I eat the way I do, live the way I don't drink, smoke or do drugs, I've been plant-based over 50 years raw, and I still cleanse and detox a minimum of four times a year. So if you start that process of breaking down this wall of toxicity that we built up around it, it's not even necessarily your fault. It's this world the way humans have created the space for us to stay in. It's a very hostile environment for human beings. Mm -hmm. So if you just make that first step and do a cleanse, and of course, I'm going to recommend mine, but there are tons of them out there. And I'm not saying mine is the only one. I, I, know, I know how it works. I know it works because it isn't something I read and learned in a book. It's something I've lived for 50 years and learned from the master. But um, if you take the time to break down those layers of toxicity that you're building up in your lifetime, your answers will come to you. I would have people in my detox classes all the time. They, they get an epiphany as they cleaned up. Oh, my God. You know, I'm not supposed to be a dog walker. I'm supposed to be an astrophysicist. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm making. But those kind of revelations come to you because it's all here. We know what we are and who we are. We've just forgotten. And our parents and grandparents and so forth. We haven't been brought up in a way to bring that to light. You know, we're busy learning two plus two. I don't know where that's going to get you now that we have tech, you know, everything phones. You don't even need to learn that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a matter of um, cleaning yourself out and you will know your answers. And I tell my students too in class, we do what we call brain dumping. So when you go to sleep at night, you go to sleep with a question on your mind. And then the first thing when you wake up before you do anything with your glass of water, you, you start brain dumping and just writing down whatever comes to mind, no matter how silly or weird it may sound, because after a while, these things start to make sense. You know, I'm kind of a woo. I say it's the angels talking to mm -hmm. us. I believe that you go to bed with a question and you don't even necessarily maybe have to be detoxing to do it. You know, I'm not saying that you have to be, but I found that so many people have been able to find their life purpose, 
find their passion, move in a direction that brings joy. You know, people are so busy looking for to direction. How am I going to make money? How am I going to, you know, look for a, a, a place of joy. You know, maybe you are just going to be a volunteer and not have this grand lifestyle or maybe, you know, it's looking for your passion and enjoy. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. And then some. And do you think like you feel more spiritual and you found your purpose more through eating a raw living foods lifestyle, raw foods diet? Well, I think that was a piece of it, but I also think, and, and maybe that piece took me to more spirituality of, of meditating and, mm-hmm. and that time of a uh, sacred time with myself, but I'm sure it's all a piece of it because the closer we get to the vibration of life, how we're supposed to be and live and the eating is a part of it. The detoxing is a part of it. The, you know, yoga is a part of it. It's all parts of it. The closer we get to that vibration of how I feel we're supposed to look, yeah, it's going to get easier. And I say easier out my mouth, but it doesn't mean everything comes to you easier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. And I know you talked about cleansing. So you do cleanses four times a year. So what do you have to say to somebody? I get this all the time. People say like the raw foods lifestyle in general is a cleanse. People like to say it is a cleansing diet. Why do you still need to cleanse? Well, and I said that, and I feel I still need to cleanse because I, um, the oxygen levels aren't what they were meant to be for human beings to live in. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're supposed to be in 38% while oxygen levels We're in the teens. Now all viruses, all cancer cells are anaerobic. They can't live in an oxygenated environment. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm getting organic vegetables, but that organic farm is right next to a pig farm. Maybe the wind doesn't stop with the chemicals. I'm driving behind buses. Um, mm-hmm perfect in the chemicalization, you know, I wash my clothes, I use a clean laundry detergent, but you know, mm-hmm. it's gonna happen. I'm not in the jungle in the environment I was meant to be in, you know, I'm in a hostel. Yeah. Uh, and then you're around people who bring toxic energy because they are working on themselves. So there's just mm-hmm. so much of an imbalance in the world, I feel the need to keep me at some form of balance. So why do I need to detox? Because I don't live in a perfect world, because I'm not perfect, you know, and because this is what I found to find balance for me. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Well said. And I know you have been carnivore before in the past or close to carnivore, like before your raw vegan days. And also, I believe so, and vegetarian and well, vegan. I, I wasn't. Yeah, I was brought up with a standard American diet, a typical African-American standard American diet. Although the beauty of that where you can take it a little difference is, yeah, we ate chicken a lot of years ago too, but my grandfather used to go down to the store. They take the live chicken, wring its neck. You know, it, it was a, a different process. It was not a wonderful process, but mm-hmm. gotten even further and further away from that, you know, the mass production and the chemicals and the way the animals. So yes, I was brought up on a standard American diet. I was very sickly. I was a very sickly child. Uh, I had the worst skin on the planet. I was, uh, and, and as a young woman, I had um, a teenager, you know, the worst cramps and menstrual cycle. I mean, yeah, I had a typical life. I was moody. I was, you know, but uh, yeah, I would say when I started cleansing, well, I started, I became a vegetarian and I didn't one day say, oh, read a book and go, oh, this is a great idea. It was an evolution for me. Mm-hmm. I had decided maybe I was going to give up red meat. I was going to try it. And then I was making chicken soup for my family. I always loved to cook. And the, I'd forgotten about it. It had overcooked. And then the bones were floating over here in the skin. And all of a sudden, I just got this epiphany. What are you doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So the process for me. And then I met Dr. Wigmore. And she just changed it. Well, I became a vegan. And then I met her. And I will say each step along the way has given me benefits and joy beyond my wildest dreams. And I sort of love the process that I went. I know you've got the internet now and everybody can, you know, push it, they can do it and blah, blah, blah. But I find the beauty of my journey, it was more like life, like going over little bridges to get there. So I could feel and understand what was happening to me along the way. So my detox classes I teach, we get people at all stages of the game, but the first week people just give up the animal products. But if you if you are uh, already a uh, plant-based or vegan, then you go to raw the first week. And we do a little process over little bridges before we actually stop eating. So we're balancing blood sugar levels and proteins and shrinking the stomach. So by the time we get to the fasting part, it's like, really, I, I couldn't eat if I wanted to because we've done all these things to balance. So I believe that we need to take this time out every so often just to give our bodies a rest. I call it my safety time, but 
because the world is going to grab you too. There's a negative gravitational pull to go in the wrong direction. And I'll give you, and, and depending on what stage of your process you're in, where it goes. So I'll give you an example. Like, you know, I've got so much going on. Believe me, opening up a restaurant is a brick and mortar. Anything in this day and age is a, is a challenge, you know, and I've already got this spa going and I sell products and blah, 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 I'm doing all this stuff. So the stress is, I'm feeling it a little bit more than usual. And yesterday I was, I got up and I had all this on my mind and all this to do. And the first thing I had was jackfruit. And then from the jackfruit, I went to a mango. And from the mango, I think I went to some dried cauliflower. Well, here's the deal. You see, normally I start my day off with water and then I have wheatgrass and then I have coconut water maybe with something else. And so my whole thing was off. So that would be my gravitational pull to go in the wrong direction because blood sugar issues run in my family. And the first thing I want is sugar. Well, it's natural, but it still doesn't bring me that balance that I know I can feel. But guess what? If that's the worst thing I ever do in my life, you know, start my yeah. day with uh, God yeah. bless. You. But that's the way with everybody's journey. You know, maybe you wake up, you were eating for pizza for breakfast, but now this morning you got up and you had a gluten-free pancake or something. I'm not saying I'm on the gluten-free craze, but you know. Mm-hmm. Depending on where you're going, it's finding the bridges to comfortably cross there. But you don't forget the main objective for me and my teaching is cleaning out because stuff is going to come in no matter how perfect you think you are. And that will help you keep you balanced and at your core. Mm -hmm. Well said. And do you think there's a right way to do the raw vegan diet? Like I know some people are low fat or they're high fruit or this and that. Like, do you think there's like what in your opinion is the right way? Okay. Well, I'm going to get the word right out of the way right away (laughs) (laughs) because I I think I just recently did a little piece on that because what is happening with our movement, and you have to understand when I started doing all this 50 something years ago, there was no internet or Google. I mean, I think there were two other people in Chicago that I knew who were doing it. You know, you had no connections or what you have today. But I think the point is that so what's happening is because somebody came to me and they said, oh, I'm a high vegan or I'm a low be- or a high raw or whatever. Mm-hmm. And all of these labels are starting to put us in a place of almost competition instead of this just is, this is the way it is. You know, it's, it's not about high, low, raw, vegan, cooked plant. It's about getting on the plant-based tribe and however you can evolve comfortably to do it. Because you're not going to stick with something you're not comfortable with anyway. So I could sit here and tell you, everybody needs this, 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 this. And this is what you need to do to get to this and to feel like I do at my age. But so what? <laughs> you know, nobody can do that. Mm-hmm. So it's gently finding ways for people to cross those bridges. I know, you know, the, the wonderful plant-based meats. I had a restaurant called Karen's Cooked, which I called a comfort food, you know, and it was like soul food. And mm-hmm. it was wheat gluten stuff and all kinds of stuff that there's so many people sticking their nose up. But you know what? It got a lot of people to get involved with plant-based period. Exactly. Made optimal for me, but it is for this person that's eating McDonald's every day, you know, and it saved a lot of cows. <laughs> so, you know, mm. because it's a different choice. So I really would like to see us get away from that right or wrong or good or bad or yes or no. Let's all be on this tribe and help each other find their best way for them, not their best way for what I say it should be, mm-hmm. but that you can kind of help that person along. I always tell my lectures when I start, I said, I don't believe there's a right or a wrong or a good or a bad or a yes or a no. There's a process. And we're not here the, to have the best homes, the best jobs, the best children, the best hug. We're here to, for the evolution of our souls in my world, you know? So Whatever is going to come to you to help you evolve and grow and change, you're a winner, Mm -hmm. good or bad. I love that. And what do you think about the fruitarian diet? Do you think people can thrive long term on only eating fruit? Well, here's my take on that. You know, from my belief system, from where I've come, that man was intended to be a breatharian first. This is where we came. We're supposed to get it all from the oxygen, just the way the plants do that we were meant to be vegetarians. And then we went down to being fruitarians where we have this to pick in in the fruit. So then we went down to fruitarians and then we went down to vegans and then we went down to vegetarians and then it was carnivore. So at some point, yes, that fruitarian thing is a wonderful thing. And I believe this would be the conscious best way for us to eat. Unfortunately, 
a big unfortunate is the world isn't like it used to be, the planet isn't. So number one, the sugars in the fruits are nothing like they were when they were created. They've been so changed and you know it's nothing like. The second thing is you're not going out climbing that tree using that kind of energy to get that piece of fruit, right? Or walking halfway mm-hmm. to the planet. You're driving in your car, you're ordering Instacart. Mm-hmm. So heavy sugar, or maybe you're walking a little farmer's market, I don't know. But it's not the same energy needed to express to take in that kind of sugar. So I'm saying the lifestyle that 90% of the people have, there are people in Hawaii and other places that are you know, able to do it differently. But, and unless they've done a lot of detoxing and cleansing, it may not still be the best thing for them. Because with the stresses of the way the world is, our bodies process the sugars in a different way. Even if you're plant-based, you can be too much sugar. I can do that in my system. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a wonderful place for people to be if this is what they found and they feel comfortable but just like where I am now I'm still learning and changing you know so never put that ceiling on your life until you're gone so maybe you're feeling fine and maybe you can do it till you're 33 or 35 and then a new reality will hit you Mm -hmm. but well I couldn't survive (laughs) and I'll tell you that's what I was explaining what I did yesterday I got I had all this sugar in the morning and because I needed the comfort I'm going through whatever Mm-hmm. But I, I, but I don't want to discourage people that they read this and they go, okay, I'm going to be plant-based and I'm going to be a fruitarian. So it got them away from whatever they were doing. They will yeah. have their burn, you know, uh, what I have seen though, uh, is that a lot of the young people that have gotten involved with the movement and they're like gung ho and they have like a million followers. And then the next thing, you know, oh, it made me sick. And now I'm a meat eater, you know, or mm-hmm. <laughs> you mm-hmm. see I credit that with not detoxing while you're doing it and not taking the bridges to go over. So you think that's why some, because some people say it didn't work for me. I'm deteriorating. You think that's the, they, they need more detox. They haven't detoxed to get there. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like people like we don't like we spent so many decades not eating well and then expect to get feel amazing and everything's perfect, like off the bat and stay that way. But maybe they need more detox. Like you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, of course, because you see, you build up layers and layers of toxicity around the cells. But here's the deal. If you start putting, you got all the tex- toxicity of whatever you ate up until the point you decided to do different. And then you start putting in the, the wheatgrass and the sprouts and the whatever healthy, but mm-hmm. it's still not all the crap that was there before. Eventually, it's going to seep through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Other unfortunate thing is detox has taken on such a wild, wide range. I'd really love to use another word. We call when we were teaching detox 40 years ago, it was we went for alcohol or drug detoxing. You know, now if people yeah. don't eat a piece of fish, they're detoxing, you know. <laughs> so true, yeah. I, I think that it I think what people really need to do is define what they're looking to get in their lives out of it. I think they need to look very carefully at the teacher. I personally, because I'm 75, wouldn't go to a 20 year old person to detox me, mm-hmm. you know, or I would go to a person that didn't look healthy. I would go to a sick doctor. I wouldn't go to a fat over, uh, you know, gym person, a, you know, person who didn't look in shape. I wouldn't go to a ball hairdresser, although I know they're in now. But I, I, I look at the person carefully to determine are they, am I going to get what I'm looking for? So I think there are many roads to do it. I have a show that I call Many Roads to the Top of the Mountain. We'll get you over there too. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel that um, there are ways, find something that resonates with you. You know, find something that resonates with you. Mm-hmm. I've been doing it and I, I love what I'm doing. And I will have some classes coming up. We have the, my classes online now and you can do them assisted or without assisted. But we're going to have the live streaming classes like I used to do years ago. Yeah, they're amazing. And who do you feel like you've resonated with the most? Like, like, has there been anybody who like has inspired you the most on this path? Yeah, uh, Dr. Ann Wigmore and Victoris Kovinskis. Uh, Victoris wrote Survival in the 21st Century. And uh, it was one of the first books I read on raw food and veganism. It was written in 1975. And I would say he is the unrecognized king guru of this whole movement at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Or is the one who started it, but they work together closely. Victor lives in Costa Rica now, has a beautiful place right off the ocean, but in the mountains. And Johnny Juicer and I did a retreat there a few mm-hmm. years ago. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of people come from all over. But he's, I think he is the unsung hero of our time. 
I believe that he is the most humble human being that knows all this. I, I hear all these people, especially the little 20, 30, 40 year olds going on and on and on. That. And Victor, this has been his life, you know. Mm-hmm. So and there are a couple of those. I'm not as close to some of Fred Vichy and some of the others, but Victor is the, um, he's my hero and my mentor. And Dr. Ann Woodmore was also. Yeah. Fred, I interviewed today. He was great. Yeah. And I'm wondering over the years, have you experienced any like deterioration symptoms? Like how has it been with your teeth, your hair, muscle, all these things? I've had things bigger than that. You know, I, I, um, for a long while, this huge thing in my throat. Uh, and I, I, this is not for anybody else. I'm not recommending it, but I have not been to a medical doctor in 45 something years. I don't get mammograms. I don't get testing. It's just not in my world. And, um, so I had this huge thing in my throat and my aunt had had it years ago and they called a goiter and they cut it out, but it came back later. I kind of looked it up. They could have called it Hashimoto. I don't know what it was, but that was partly that I worked with Victor and we developed my systemic enzyme. And um, I just went deeper and deeper into my healing and cleansing. And it took, I would say about two and a half years, but I got rid of it. You see, that's the other thing. We're always looking for this instant gratification with everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and what is the challenge? You didn't do it overnight. You built it up, and to get rid of it, it doesn't go over, um, go away overnight. I usually teach my clients and students. It takes anywhere from seven months to a year for a relatively healthy body to change, and a year to two with a, a strong challenge. So it took me a couple of years. Let's see what else. Have I, oh, I've had uh, thing in my. I had a issue with one of my breast ones. Uh, I took care of that. I've had. Uh, my teeth are, are, uh, in, are um, they're not all real because I didn't take care of my mouth. My hair is great. My muscle tone is great. I was taking a, a professional advanced ballet class up until five years ago when I broke my shoulder in 17 places Wow! And there. And then I broke the shoulder and I got a pin in my knee, but I started dancing again. And I was on a walker. I couldn't dress myself. I couldn't do anything. And I was walking my dog and I looked in the mirror and I saw this old lady on this walker. And this isn't going to happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. And uh, so, you know, I'm about ready to dance. I'm walking three miles a day and, you know, all that other stuff. And I did not take the painkillers and all the other things that they wanted me to do. So I've had some issues. But for me, when I have an issue, it just means, oops, you need to go deeper, stronger. You need maybe there's a form a point in your meditation, you go to, because we, we get discomfort for many reasons mm-hmm. because we're at, not at ease in our bodies. So it comes from mm-hmm. many. So, you know, a lot of times people need to address everything that's going on and not just what seems apparent, like the, the pain in the hip, you know, maybe mm-hmm. it's, it's living, maybe you're living with somebody you shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good point. Sure. I feel like you like re like, rebound from things like quickly and well and turn it into something good, including like hard times. I think like a couple of years ago, you went through some hard times, like a bunch of things happening at once. And I'm just wondering, do you have any advice for somebody out there who might be going through some hard times and like how you can transmute that into something positive, like you've done, whether it be with their health or emotional things? Absolutely. Well, I think one of the first things, and it can be one of the most, you have to allow, if something has happened, allow yourself a grieving period to give your a point. You know, okay, I'm going to feel crappy for three days or three hours or, you know, my daughter had a problem. She came out and she was so miserable. I said, okay, you got three days to do it and then you got to be done with it. You know, so I think you have to set, you have to set intention and goal. You just can't wallow and let things happen. And you may not hit that point right away, but at least, you know, you've got a point to hit. Okay. So I allowed myself, I said, okay, (laughs) first I didn't do right away because everything was happening, the business, the restaurant, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, God, but at least I got my health. And that's when I fell and broke everything. So I <laughs> wow. Okay. But here's another point to that real quick before I get to the, um, for your, your viewers. The, the sages believe that we live in 10 year cycles. And when you get to 70, um, there's, they say that um, this is when you die. And it doesn't mean you have to die figuratively. You could die literally like you're going to this on the same cruises or to the same restaurants or watching the same shows on television, whatever it is. It is kind of like a death because you aren't relevant anymore. You aren't looking and thriving. So I, wa- I wasn't at that point, but I really was at the top of my game for everything. I had been on Oprah three times, Steve Harvey. I was traveling all over the world, driving a Bentley, living a 
and whoosh, <laughs> it was all taken away. But what I realized is I had hit 70 and I don't think I was living in true intention any longer. Things came so easy. And I think God's spirit universe said, we're just going to whip all this away because you got to stay relevant, Karen. We got more for you to do, <laughs> you know? And so uh, that's what happened. I lost everything and I've had to start over, but it has given me such a, um, a lot of ajita, you know, <laughs> a lot of uh, aggravation, but that's part of life and it's keeping me relevant. And so what do I say? For the people going through rough times, maybe you make a list of what all your passions were and things that you would like to see yourself doing. And that may feel hard a little bit first, even if it seems the wildest thing on the world that you could do, you know, you don't know how that could ultimately translate. Find something to do for somebody else. Go, mm -hmm. go uh, volunteer at an animal shelter, you know, or volunteer at a nursing home or go step outside of yourself and your grief and your terror going through and put yourself where somebody else may have it worse and you can help them. Guess what comes right back at you. You know, this has been my grace that my cert has been of service. So I've always got something coming at me as I'm giving out. Mm -hmm. So find somebody to help, you know, you got a dollar, give somebody 25 cents. You know, if, if you're saying I don't have money, we'll give somebody a quarter of that money, you know, mm -hmm. I, Somebody, if you're walking down the street, find play a little game with yourself to say something positive or nice about that person to make them feel good for that day. Get outside of yourself. That's I don't know that I do it on purpose. My kids used to say, "My mom's so positive, you could send her a pile of puppy. I mean, dog crap, and she'd go, "Where's the puppy?" You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's finding, looking to give joy to somebody else. You know, not a sense, but you can do a little vignettes of saying, "So, oh, I love those shoes you're wearing," or you know, "I'm so happy to see you in pink today." You know, there's always something you can say to brighten somebody's day. And you do that enough, even if you don't feel like doing it, make it a job to do it, you know, and eventually it'll bring a smile to your face and you'll start to feel better, I think. Mm -hmm. I love that. So true. And I'm wondering, is your family raw vegan as well? Is your husband raw? And what about your children? I'm not too sure. Chris. <laughs> your husband's what, sorry? He smokes cigarettes. <laughs> oh, he does. Yeah. You know what? We separated and we're in the process of getting back together. And I haven't been open about that, but we have totally different lifestyles like that too. Wow. I, wow. And, well, and it's so funny because, so we've moved out to the suburbs. We've been together 39 years. All right. And I'm very, like, I have the house, the kitchen separated, you know, he can't bring animal products in the house. My husband is Jewish. I do let him have his locks on, you know, sometimes and, and we make him um, the fried matzi. But he, he doesn't bring, and he doesn't eat uh, animals. Only. Anyway, so I have the refrigerator. I have an extra refrigerator. He has his own refrigerator now. I have the pantry split. But you know what? Viva la difference, you know? I mean, we're different. And there's so many other, I dated a lot of jerks who didn't smoke, you know? <laughs> so mm -hmm. you have to weigh what life has, what you need out of life, you know? And he's a perfect companion for me in so many ways. He supported everything I want to do, even though it isn't his lifestyle, but he's come to it, you know, pretty much. Yeah. Well, that's kind of nice to hear. You know, I can resonate with that. Cause like I said, my husband and I were working on things and our lifestyle is just totally opposite. And you don't hear that too often because most raw vegans I interview or see like, it's like, if they're with somebody, it's like two like high vibe and raw vegans together. And like, you don't really that's, that's crazy too, to be honest with caveman <laughs> 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 type, you know, I'm not that. And, and it's just all types, you know, yeah. I mean, I play poker, smoke cigarettes. We used to go to Vegas, you know, yeah. um, it's, I'm just, I live in many worlds, you know, I, I live in many worlds and I'd be very bored if I had to stay in just one. And so my husband mm -hmm. is totally different, but he's support. I mean, he's right now, he's 79 years old. He's next door working with a couple of guys to build my restaurant. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So, so amazing. That's I feel like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so he smoked, but I'll tell you this. So we have a, a backyard now and I put a table and chair way on the other side of the backyard and that's where he can go to smoke. And I call it the dumb shit chair. So he has to go over <laughs> about it and he has a place in the front and that's, he can smoke and you know what it is, what it is. Yeah. And how has it felt moving from the city to the country? Have you lived in the country before? I lived in Evanston, which was a suburb that my kids were raised there, but it was kind of like a little city. Where I live, Flossmore, is like Mayberry, USA. I love it so much. People are, it's just a whole different vibe. And 
I don't know because if it's a South suburb, it's almost like young people have more respect. You know, they call me ma'am. And I'm like, who are you talking to in the city? They push you out of the way. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it's just a whole people look at you. They speak. When I'm walking my dog, they wave from across to the street. You know, have a blessed day. It's like, where am I? I used to look <laughs> at the Gold Coast of Chicago, you know, a duplex across from the Cardinal, blah, blah. You get on the elevator with these people, they wouldn't even look up to say good morning to you, you know? But yeah. out here, like everybody is just, it's a different world. And I'm very needed. There's only one vegan restaurant out here. People aren't, they're not as aware. So I'm very excited to come and bring the awareness mm-hmm. in Chicago and uh, other places that I did. So it's kind of like Mayberry USA. It's really yeah. a love. Amazing. I'm excited for you. And I'm wondering, I know you wake up before the sunrise every morning, I believe, or most mornings. And what do you feel like the benefits are to doing that? Well, the reason that I do that uh, is because I call it, it's getting myself ready for the day. It's putting everything into me. It's my real breakfast. It's putting everything into me to fortify me so that whatever the world decides to send my way or people or whatever, i I've plugged in all those holes that could so easily something could pierce and all of a sudden I could feel bad or weird or awkward. Mm -hmm. So for me, I get up with the sun. I do several meditations like Lagne Hotra, which is a fire ceremony. I pray, I meditate, I do the uh, Tibetan rites. I do, I do. And then I just kind of, I journal, I write. So I don't touch my phone or look at it until 9 a.m. And I get up at about 5, 5.30. And I don't look Mm -hmm. at it as a late sleeper. So it's like, I have a whole day to myself, Mm -hmm. but you know what? I encourage people to do it. And I didn't have that much time. I started with like everything else. I started doing this and then, oh, then I had to add another prayer. And when I learned out something, so I didn't start with this, this many hours, but what I do say to people is find a sacred healing time for you where there's no input. So maybe it's after dinner, after your family, maybe it's sitting in the car when you're doing something, I'm going to get up for a half hour, you know, find some plug in time where everything is coming right back to you. And you're not just giving out because we consciously and unconsciously, we're always, and those of us, especially that are um, teachers or, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. or in the hot, that service business, you're always giving, you can't help yourself. And, but everybody kind of, especially women, especially women, you know, we're, we're always, everything is more important. So I make it my sacred healing time. Nobody can bother me. My, not my daughter, not my, nobody can bother me. And then it's like, whatever I need, I'm able to handle. Mm-hmm. It's life-changing. Yeah. And I'm wondering, what do you feel like? Moments now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm wondering, what do you feel like people who say, well, Karen, like you look amazing. You're doing amazing because a lot of it is genetics. Oh, I'm so, cause I'm a, when we're done, I'm going to actually do one of my little thoughts of the day on that. It's like, you're reading my mind. Because someone was just here at the spa and we were talking. She said, oh, you're lucky. And I said, no, my sweet luck had nothing to do with it. I said, planning, intention, perseverance, and knowing what I want. It has nothing to do with luck. All right. Maybe this goes as luck. Okay. Uh, Maybe the color of my eyes is luck. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing else is luck. My mother all the women, they grade early and I started graying early. That's the weakening of the kidneys. See every, and I've done no work by the way, and I don't do fillers. You can see I have lines and stuff. Uh, and it's not that I'm a goody two shoes. Part of it is, is I want to see how far I can go. Maybe at 95, I may decide to do something, but I want to see how far, and I want to stay authentic. I want to see what really yeah. happened in the process. So I haven't, but my mother was overweight and uh, her mother had all kinds of problems. My grandmother was diabetic, had a leg amputated to it. So I haven't come from a good gene pool, good people, good integrity, but not health. Mm -hmm. And um, so it has nothing to do. I'm not lucky. Oh, and the other thing I get is, oh, well, you're a black woman, you know, you don't age, you know, Mm -hmm. you're the male. Well, yeah, but we get hypertension, overweight, diabetes, a zillion other things. And I'm looking at my sisters now, and some of them aren't looking as great because the older black women could get away with more because there were less chemicals than what we have to deal with today. Mm-hmm. So everything's going in a different direction and you literally have to dig yourself out of the rabbit hole and find a community to help you stay there, which is why I so appreciate people like you and what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm wondering over all the years, have you ever considered leaving the raw foods lifestyle? No, no. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. I mean, 
why would I, if you feel great? Yeah. And I also believe, like I said, you have to detox and I have consistently detoxed all these years. I used to go to Optimal Health Institute twice a year. That was a Dr. Wigmore place. Uh, Rachel Solomon ran it. And I used to go there twice a year without fail for like 15 years, even though I lived it, I taught it. Because you see, no, I never thought of going away because I'm always putting commercial in my brain and my body. You know, I don't know. I don't hang out with a lot of raw foodists. I don't even hang out with a lot of vegans, to be honest with you. I don't hang out with a lot of people, but I have so much more to talk about than food. You know, I play the piano. I dance for years. I read political books. I read romance novels. You know, I play the piano. I, there's so much more to me than my food. So, no, I, I've never considered, you know, I've had some backsliding with some cooked food, especially during some stressful times. And I'll tell you, my big cheap food is popcorn and potatoes, which are two of the worst. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I no, it would never because you know I I can see and I think it's because I detox I can see and feel the difference. So mm -hmm. why would I do it? Because somebody said you know you shouldn't eat root vegetables or you shouldn't do this or you should. No, I'm my laboratory. I know it feels right, and I'm very clear on that because I always clean out and I don't allow the garbage to pile up around me where I get crazy and lose my thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for somebody who says, why living foods, Karen, like why the living foods? That's a very, very easy one. I, I love this visual that Sadhguru does. He says, everything you eat is what you become. You know, you start out as a little baby like this. And how do you grow through this? It's all the food going through your body. So it is dead cows and pigs and whatever. This is what's creating your system and how you feel. And if it's living food, like your living cells, then this is what it's creating. You see, it like begets like live food. You look and feel alive. Dead food, you look and feel dead. It's that simple. When I have got, had my backslides and cooked food, I could actually smell myself. Not a bad stinky smell, but mm -hmm. it was for the vibrations around me. I know I'm getting a little kooky, but no, I agree. It's true. Yeah, in my vibration, you know. And so, no, it's it's never. And I could no more eat a dead animal. But going back to me, I tell the story in my classes that. Uh, that movie alive did you see that movie when the plane crashed into the mountain yeah and they started eating each other they were slicing off each other's butts to mm -hmm. eat there was one woman who wouldn't do it and she died that would be me there's no way i could eat a dead animal mm -hmm. and, and i go out with friends but i've gotten very clever with how i avoid you know like i'm sitting at the cannibals table <laughs> i avoid how because i don't pay attention i don't comment i don't want people yeah. to feel uncomfortable yeah you know? And so, but there's no way I could go back even now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, I'd love to get into the viewers questions, but first I'm wondering, what do you eat in a typical day? <laughs> oh, you know, that's, remember I said, we started out as breatharians. I mean, I, I eat, so I eat more for joy and camaraderie because I really require very little food. I asked Vic, I, I told you about Victor Kalinskis. I said, Victor, you know, I, when I start fasting, I don't even feel any difference sometimes till like four or five days. And he said, because your body has gotten so used to operating efficiently with so little. So it takes so little. So I even have more energy. I mean, I mm -hmm. sleep four hours a night for the past 20 years. I, I'm, I'm never tired. I'm never sleepy. So what would I eat? It depends on if I'm being greedy, you know, or somebody's mm -hmm. made delicious. Then yeah. I, would, I always start out the day with water. And I do structured water. That's another whole conversation. But I, I drink structured water in the morning. I go to bed with it by my side of the bed with a sign that says love and gratitude because I'm infusing what I want to feel and do for the next day. So I drink my water first thing in the morning. I do oil pulling in the morning and I do, uh, and I run, that's another. Then uh, what's the first thing I have? You know, it's one of three things. I will either do some neem, uh, like a, a mixture of a neem tea with turmeric, and I'll drink that because it kind of sets the tone for my system and gets my spirituality in a certain place. Or I'll have coconut water. Uh, I have wheatgrass in the morning. Then later on, if I feel hungry, I may have some celery juice or something. I got a juice here right now. I have juices made and ready. My latest Craze has been pepper juice, though. Oh, red pepper juice. That's all I want. Wow, so, I've never had that. Wow. So, well, um, when I go on my sugar breaks, that's all I allow myself is red peppers and tomatoes for sweet. But this is uh, this is a, from kale or something from my garden. 
anyway, then if I feel hungry, like I bring stuff here sometimes, or, or my team members, they bring stuff. But we, I like the uh, a lot of the miyoki, her miyoko, her fake cheeses. I'll have that with a raw cracker, or I'll have something dehydrated, or I'll make a big delicious salad or um, something, and I put all kinds of stuff like spirulina and stuff in it. I know I'm pretty hardcore, but then I'll have my moments where I'll have, I'll go down and they make a raw plate, you know, or I, I don't eat a lot. My big goal always is to not eat after sundown. They call it intermittent fasting now, but it's eating with Mr. Mm-hmm. Cake. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, I, I really don't eat a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering with the fasting, like not with the sundown or intermittent fasting type of stuff, but with the more deeper cleansing and fasting, like I've done juice cleansing and mono fruit fast, but I've never done anything deeper than that. No water fast, anything. Do you think if somebody wants to do a deeper cleanse or a deeper fast that they need to sort of not be working and doing much and not like my kids are young? Do you think I need to wait till they're older and not so busy? Or do you think people can function properly doing those types of cleanses with all the the duties maybe they need to do? Well, it depends on where your body is, where you're going. You see, because of these layers, it depends on what you're going to be releasing. You generally, when I would get to mm-hmm. a water and just stop eating and start a water fast, you know, I'm raw already, which I want the person to be raw. And then I would go into juice fasting and then I would see where my body felt like that's usually, so I've usually on a juice fast for like seven to 10 days before I go to water. So my body is getting ready for itself you actually feel like you're on top of the mountain, like you could do it, it but it depends on how clean your system are and what it needs to release. So once again, it's making your body, your laboratory, and you learning about you, you know, so Mm -hmm. go to a water fast. I would have, I would see how I felt after three or four days of, um, I'm in the window here, like at the zoo, my office is right up front. (laughs) Some people walk by. (laughs) Um, But I, I think it's, I think you will intuitively know, but yes, it can be done. I mean, okay. I, yeah, it can be done, but I also don't know if that's the way you want to do it the first time too. Do you mm-hmm. know, maybe mm-hmm. it is really the best way to do it, even if you could. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd love to ask you some viewer questions if you still have some time. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the first question is, it says you've been promoting distilled water and they're wondering how has that aided your lifestyle? I haven't, I didn't know that I really promoted any water. I said structured water, mm-hmm. um, but always try to get me to pigeonhole myself into that. Uh, I do believe distilled water is the best water when you're fasting or detoxing. I do have distiller on my home, but we have a mineral intake that puts the minerals back into it. But I'm just big on just don't do sink water and go to what levels you can. Because I've had, I've had an ozonated water sink thing. I've had the multi-pure. I've had like four or five different ones. Now I do have the distiller and, but I'm bigger on structured water and that's another whole class and whatever I'm yoga that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. And the next question, they want to know about menopause and hormone. They said menopause and hormone question around fat gain, energy, and everything about aging. So maybe if you could talk a little bit about how maybe, yeah. Well, I went through the menopause and thought I was pregnant <laughs> because I had no symptoms. You know, I really don't believe that it's part of the human process that when you get a certain age, everything shuts down and you have to have medical science to take you on the rest of the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that cleansing and detoxing is a big part of it because you keep the levels so the body naturally goes into the next phase as my body did. I didn't, ch- nothing changed on me. I just stopped having a cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot has ninety percent of it has to do with the diet. So much of it is the sugar breakdown. So when uh, I work with women with menopause that are taking my detox class, all of a sudden they're not having the hot flashes at night, and that's due to the fact that we're taking fenugreek seed and doing other things to balance blood sugar levels. We're changing the diet, so you can totally get around that. But it's the work and the intention that you have to put into it. Mm-hmm. But yeah worked with many, 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 many people. And I've worked with many people that hadn't had a cycle for years. All of a sudden they got it back. I've worked with people through their men- menopause and they've done it quite beautifully the way okay. I did. Okay. Nice. And the next question is nuts and seeds. How many and when? So I guess they're wondering how many nuts and seeds you include in your diet or you think people should include. I think they should include as long as it's nuts and seeds, and especially if it's soaked. Where's my book? You know, my book is called Soak Your Nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I'll link all your stuff below too. Yeah. 
um, as long as, as you're soaking them. You know, you see, we live in this world of how many grams of protein or how many handfuls of this, we're looking for measurements for our bodies mm -hmm. and really don't feel that that's a realistic way to live your life. I think that if you're doing the right thing, you may overdo it the first week or two weeks, and then all of a sudden your body will balance itself off because that's what it needed at that time. So giving people weights and measurements is, I think, kind of like, um, like even in my classes, I don't do that. You know, I have a woman that lost 100 pounds with me. She was taking my detox class every other month for eight months, and she was eating almost all raw desserts in the in-between, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not saying... I, but, and of course, here's the other thing too. If they're soaked, you're not going to overeat them. If mm -hmm. they're roped, you will. So if you had raw organic soaked seed, then your body is going to get the nutrients that it needs at that time. And you're not going to overeat them. You may try. So you can take them and dehydrate them again with some other salt and salt and make them. But you're just not going to overeat when you're eating the right things. It may feel like it initially, but that's what plugging up a hole your body needed initially at that time. Mm -hmm. And do you think sometimes people overeat because they're missing nutrients and their body's just wanting more nutrients? You're, you get hunger because the cells say, I need food. That's the only reason you get hungry. Well, no, that's not true. It's the time of day. People all the time to eat. It's, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I would, but we're only supposed to eat because the cells are signaling, I need fuel. If mm -hmm. they don't, the more efficient the fuel, the less of it it needs. So that's why people, when you, when you come to this way, you, Although I do see the, uh, the new raw food is they're eating trials of food. You should see the amounts of food that uh, people are eating. And I think that's great because mentally that's how they're getting over their bridge to get to the next step. But, you know, I remind people to look at your fist, whatever size your fist is, this is the size of your stomach. It's a tiny little sack in there. So for me to be able to tell you, and I don't know what energy you're going to expend today. I don't know emotionally what's going to happen to you. Today. So how can I say you need two handfuls of nuts, mm -hmm. you know? Maybe your boyfriend broke up with you and you'll need a bag. And mm -hmm. that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Danielle wants to know, do you ever juice fast as you drink a juice? And if so, how long have you done? Okay. Well, you just jumped on because I was talking about that. I usually juice before I go to water, but you know what? I, I don't want to discuss that how long I've gone or I don't, because mm -hmm. it's taken such a, flavor of a challenge or a contest. Mm. I don't want people to live their lives in a contest or a challenge. Yeah. I want there to be joy and comfortability. And if you're striving for what I'm supposed to do, then you're always striving and you're not in that moment of enjoying. Maybe it's a day and a half. Maybe it's three days, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I just love you and your approach to everything. I think it's awesome. I think you're just so cool, down to earth, relatable. It's great, honestly. And okay, so the next one is not a question. It's a comment from Anne. And it said, I just showed her picture to my husband. And he said he thinks she looks like she's in her late 30s. So I just thought I'd say that because a lot of people think that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and Black Diamond, she's amazing. One of my viewers, she said, what is your greatest interest, Karen? Oh, my greatest interest. Wow. Um, the vibrations of the universe. I love it. And there's so many ways to explore that, you know? Yeah, the vibrations of the universe. And that's why I love music, too, because it's a vibration. And the way it can be universe, it's all the ways that we can come together through the vibrations and finding and feeling and touching and, and connecting with it. Yeah, me too. What's your favorite type of music? R and B. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I'm a gay girl, but I play classical piano, and mm. I love everything. I love all kinds of music, but I'm a Marvin Gaye girl. I, so people think because I do meditate, but before I speak, even before we had this, I was sitting in my car. I listened to Marvin Gaye. What's going on? It's kind of like my pump up song. So I was in Lithuania at a symphony stage with 3,000 people. And I'm over in the corner with my earphones on. They didn't have the black ones. And I'm over there and I'm listening to Marvin Gaye. I'm going, she's over there meditating. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Music. I love music. It's amazing. It does so much to change our vibe. I feel like sometimes if my mood is down, I just put on music. It changes oh, your vibe. I am never without music. Never. So, no. and I all kinds, but yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. And then don't you feel like when you can change your vibe like that, then your thoughts are just more positive and everything is just more positive <laughs> it's because music is a vibration. Mm -hmm. So it changes vibe. how it all weaves together. 
Yeah. Amazing. And the next question is, so the next question says, how has she dealt with society and relationship, family and friends, pressures concerning a raw plant-based diet and lifestyle? Yeah. Well, you know, years ago, like when I started all this, I was definitely the person you never invited to dinner, you know, (laughs) dating wasn't, not that I required anybody, but you know, if I go out, people want you to eat, they want you to order what they're ordering, whatever, you know? So it, it's, but now it's easy, you know, everybody talk. it's great. But back then, it was challenging. My first restaurant, I had a sign that said fresh gourmet raw, you know, fresh raw food. And people would walk by and look at me, the, the police thought I was a drug dealer or something like growing the wheatgrass, you know, it was like, <laughs> but eventually, you know, it, it caught on, but it was very difficult. And people still, people like to make comments or whatever from time to time. But you know what? My biggest joy is letting people feel comfortable with what they want to think and feel, you know? So I don't ever start telling people unless they ask me why it's not good for them or why they shouldn't. Because one of the things I learned, I went to eight grammar schools, four high schools. I had a very chaotic childhood. And one thing I learned was nobody's going to listen to you or want to be around you if they don't like you. Okay. So you got to be a person that's likable mm-hmm. and being judgment judgmental of people or showing people how foolish they are, no matter how much you know they are, is not going to make them go, oh, you're right. I need to listen to you, <laughs> you know? So mm-hmm. I think <laughs> it's for people to ease up, lighten up, allow people to be comfortable, find some joy that you have together that doesn't have to be around food or what they're eating, like my husband and I have for 39 years. There's, there's just so much to us. In, in fact, everybody's looking for ways to separate themselves now anyway. You know? mm-hmm. And I love the story. There was a guy sitting in my um, waiting room at my old place. And um, he had on a, 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 a trucker hat, you know, on the plaid. Sh- uh, he had a T-shirt on. And it had rifles on it. And it said, death to the infidels. And, you know, he did not look like your typical colonic person, you know, or or. And, but apparently his girlfriend was in having a colonic and he was sitting there looking pretty uncomfortable. So I walked by and I said, so what is your t-shirt? He said, nothing. I said, oh, come on, you got two rifles. And what does your t- t-shirt mean? Mm-hmm, nothing. So, you know, I'm a black woman. And he, looked, he didn't look like he was, he says, well, it's death to the infidels. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, that certainly isn't my mantra. I don't feel that way. I said, but you know what? I am just the way you're loving my dog. He was so loving to my dog. He was so, he, the dog was looking at all. So there was a joy that I could find in this human being. So he was not in the same connection that I had in every area, but there was something beautiful. And I've had some raw vegans come yeah. in and have works with my dog. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. That, that piece of, cause we all have a connection. And so finding ways, tell your viewer, look for ways to find connection, not distinction. Or difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the next question is by take care of yourself. And they're wondering how important are calories to you? And then they also said that they wonder if the body needs less and less calories, the cleaner and healthier we get. Yeah, that's a twofold answer. What was the first part of the question? How important are calories to you? Yeah. You know, that's just another man-made thing to me. Calories. If I were in the junk, worried about ca- counting my calories, I'd be worried about fuel and, and energy. And if what I'm putting in my mouth is creating that. So now I've never counted calories. Um, I've never, and I personally don't see how it's helpful, but because if counting calories and gyms and all the stuff that the world focuses on, everybody would be walking around thin and healthy. And that's Mm -hmm. not, I don't think that's the right focus necessarily. Yeah, true. And do you, and the other part, which I think you do think, do you think the body needs less and less, the cleaner and healthier we get? The more, the more efficient the fuel is and the more efficient the body can receive it, of course, you're going to leave less and less and less. Yeah. And then Rank it some days and you want more, but no, you don't need a lot. Yeah. And the next question, I love it. They said, ask her, was it worth it? Could she imagine life being better any other way? Was it worth it? Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Well, first of all, most of my friends are deceased. My whole family is deceased. I mean, my girlfriends are dying from breast cancer and everything. And those who aren't dying or sick from it are on some kind of medication, you know, for something. And it's not to say, it's just, I can, it's a clear picture. It's like I say, now everybody talks about vegan, vegan. I feel like I'm living proof that it works, Mm -hmm. you know, 
question it at all. I, I just, I'm so grateful that my mother put me in this direction and I was obsessive com compulsive enough to say, and I'll tell you ladies, I do it as much for vanity as I do for health because we don't have to get all these lines. We don't have to put, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what they're doing or what you're doing. It's just the less you have to deal with man-made stuff, the better off you're going to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So true. And the next question, they said, I'd like to know how, as she approached the end of her menstrual cycle. So in her forties and pre-menopause, what changes she saw, she saw happen in her body and her cycles. And did she have to lift heavier weight or eat more protein during that time? First of all, I didn't know that it happened. Just one day I didn't have mm -hmm. a period. So nothing changed whatsoever. Not my sexual drive, not anything in my body changed except, and I, well, I, well, there was a little mental thing when it, I realized it because like, oh, I can't control everything through diet, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, like, oh, it's still, it's gone now. It was like, not that I wanted more children or I was grieving, but it was just that little switch. Like, oh, there is some stuff like I am going to die. You know, it, there's some stuff, there is a switch that you have no control over. So I think I had that little thing, but in terms of anything else, absolutely nothing changed. Absolutely nothing. I mean, Amazing. Yeah. Wow. And somebody said they love your restaurant in Chicago. Good gourmet raw food. And the next question says, William says, I've tried raw vegan time and time again, but I haven't been able to break five days. I get really weak physically and can't think fast or completely as I approach the fifth day. I've tried so many raw vegan approaches, but none have worked for me. I know raw vegan is really healthy, but is there any hope for me to be raw vegan without having these adverse effects? Well, here's the deal. That's why I believe in detox and love doing it. And that's why in my class, there's certain things I'm giving you to balance your blood sugar levels. There's certain things I'm giving you to, there's an intention behind every step of the way of my classes that I teach. And so when, when I'm pulling something out, I'm filling it up with something else. So you're not going from, I don't know what your diet is or how you're eating before that to being raw vegan, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm bridges to take you there, but I'm giving you certain supplements and things like I'm giving you different spirulina and algaes and stuff to balance protein and calcium, but we're not counting how many, you know, we're just taking it in. So yes, I believe it can be done. Yes. I believe it can be done successfully. I'm not saying you won't have any little hiccups along the way. We all get hiccups. There is no smooth ride to the top. Mm -hmm. um, but there's steps to get there. But mm -hmm. I believe that once you find the right steps and you're comfortable, your brain doesn't even go there. You just do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the next question they're wondering in the 40 years, did you ever eat cooked? Which I think you did say you yeah. have now and then. And yeah, they were asking that, but I'm wondering like, how did you feel when you ate? How do you feel if you have some cooked food versus being hundred percent raw? felt a smell to myself. Like I could smell myself yeah. as a human and exceptionally tired, none of the energy that I enjoy all the time. That's what it does to me. If I, ha I haven't had any in so long, it's been a couple of years, but, and I get so dehydrated if I have anything. I get like the big Thanksgiving dinner with every, you know, it's, for me, it's a little bit of something and I'm like ready for bed. Yeah. Yeah. And the next yeah. question there. Hangover the next day from it. It's almost yeah. like I don't up with that. It's like so, somebody puts your little light out for a bit. So yeah. I'm kind of like eatiness of it too. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. And the next question, well, the next one said you're a bombshell, which you are. And we went through that one and that one. And they're wondering what you think about enemas and colonics. And I do think you're for those, right? I believe, you know, they, Pythagoras in the veg, first vegetarian villages, they were using weeds and gourds to do colonics and I mean, to do enemas. So it's been around since forever. And I believe, I don't believe anybody should do any kind of detox of any kind without it, without doing them. And from what I learned from Dr. Wigmore, I mean, she, and we have also, we've had people reverse all types of, from stage four cancer and all, but it doesn't happen with just the diet. You got to get the old stuff out too. My dog's coming. Mm -hmm. The next question, Taylor wants to know, and this is a great question. What are the best foods to eat that keep you full and satisfied? <laughs> well, it depends on what you love and it depends on what time of day it is. And what time. one thing I do, I think one of the best things to keep you feeling full, you may not realize it is that 32 ounces of water in the morning, you feed your body what it really wants in the water at the morning, your, your brain's 70% water, your body's 70% water, your body wants water. You'd be surprised how long it takes before you get hungry. After getting that, you don't even realize it's the water. Um, uh, you know, 
everything I do, and I do such small amounts. But I would say for somebody who's starting out, my green meal smoothie would be wonderful because we're adding lecithin and a soy lecithin, I mean, um, sunflower lecithin, and we're adding a flax oil, and we're adding something to make a complete food, a smoothie. And so my green meal smoothie would do it. Um, there, I mean, it just depends on what stage you are in your own eat, eat, whole eating process also. You know, I, I don't know what you'd be coming from this to this because a lot of times what I do is I develop foods that are similar to what you were used to eating in that world. And, you know, and then after a while you do another detox and you're not comfortable with that and you go to the next level. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. And Colette said she wants to know about your sugar detox, what you would eat in a day on it. And they said they'd like to try it, but they have no idea how to do raw without high fruits. Well, the sugar detox is not being raw, but yes, well, you monk fruit and I'm allowing red pepper and tomatoes. So you would be able to have red pepper and tomatoes and, you know, instead of saying, I don't know how I couldn't do it. Try saying, let me try it for one day and see how it works. Mm -hmm. And you've done six months, right? On that? Oh, Oh yeah. And when I did the six months sugar it was like, oh, I lost another 15 years off my face. That's why as soon as I get this restaurant done, I've got to do it again. Wow. I mean, uh, that the sugar is one of the biggest evils on the planet for all of us. It really is. So but that's another whole class and story. Okay. The next question, this is a good question. How long does it take to, co- to totally clean up a super dirty gut on raw food? That's, I think that's a good question. It's a great question, but it's an impossible one to answer because how yeah. long, how are you? How long have you been eating? What's your diet like? You know, when I give my classes and I will be doing a, a three or four where I'll use my PowerPoint again, I actually show you how we build up the layers of toxicity. So I don't know how many layers you have. I would say, you know, you would know each one that you did of mine, you would see a different, total different level of where you are and where you want to be and where you might want to go. But that, I think it's an impossible question to ask. That's, that's like what the medical profession does. They have one standard and it, it's mm-hmm. so- mm-hmm. true. And I have a medical profession, by the way, and I have some wonderful yeah. doctors that come and send their clients to me and come to me. I worked with a doctor last year that was insulin dependent for 13 years and he got off the needle. Wow. So I, I'm not saying anything against doctors. Yeah, no, I know. I know. And Leah said she'd like to know your skincare routine. Yeah. Well, I use castor oil and coconut oil to take my makeup off. And then I use a little hydrogen peroxide thing that I use. I do all natural stuff on my face. I do. I had my own makeup line up until everything wow. went into a bunch of my old makeup still left that I use for myself. So I use castor oil. I do have one of those um, derma wands, you know, and I have a red light that I use from time to time. Mm. But coconut, oh, I use Irish moss on my skin every day. Oh, nice. and I use- acid that's those are my I use I couldn't think from them and I use aloe I have aloe plants all over the bathroom in my bedroom nice nice and the crazy farm girl said they want to know how did you deal with cravings in the beginning for the cooked foods if you remember well yeah I would literally find something what am I craving you know and then I would find the lesser of the evils, you know and I say this in my classes too you know it's not about going I'm going to be perfect you know, because mm-hmm. that perfect, when you say, I'm going to, how many times you not do it when you say that's what you're going to do. So what I teach and what I did for myself, I do this go, mm-hmm, it's part of my process and just move on to the next day. Mm-hmm. So um, this day, let's do today. And then you build on it. If you, if you put yourself down, if you have expectations, which why I won't discuss my fasting time, if you're in a challenge or a contest, you're going to fail. Or if you don't fail, you're not going to be comfortable and happy with your, mm-hmm. with your Mm-hmm. And Melanie said, I've been raw vegan for a year and a half now. Six months ago, I took the sugar break that Karen made a video about and encouraged people to do so. I cut out all fruit from my diet and sugars in an effort to lose the last 10 pounds. I lost some weight and got leaner. I recently reintroduced fruits in a moderate amount and I have quickly gained weight. My energy level is so much better and I wake up feeling great. It has been three weeks back on fruit and my glow to my skin is beginning to return as it had gone away. I know that fruit needs to be in my diet and I don't want to gain weight. Will my weight stabilize and go back down as my body goes through the transition of trying to metabolize fruit sugars again? Probably. But one of the things too, I would make sure I'm doing a good probiotic 
because so often that I'm not a doctor or scientist, but over the years, what I found so often what that sugar is doing, and I don't know what your stress levels are in your life. It's feeding yeast in your body. And that's where that puffiness and, and fat comes back or feeling of mm-hmm. fat. So there are other things to work on just that, but definitely I would make sure I'm doing good digestive enzymes with them. Karen's are one of the best. You probably yeah. have them. do good digestive enzymes with it. And I would, you know, I would make sure I'm doing some blood sugar balancing sugars too, like jackfruit and, you know, fruits like that I, I would do. And I would generally do, for me, it works best to do my fruit later in the evening. I do mine later in the day because if I do it first in the morning, it shoots my blood sugar up and then I have to keep doing it all day, you know, to, to keep it up. So I do it, it's more of like a dessert treat for later in the evening for me instead of starting my day. Or okay. maybe or like with my green meal smoothie, if you're doing the fruit that you're doing a strong green with it, like spirulina or chlorella, that helps balance so. it. Yeah. And what food makes you feel your best? Water. Oh, coconut water, water, nothing. Yeah. Water. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I, I just feel connected and it, it just really, I love. But if I were to pick a food, I was, I, if I were headed to be on an island, I would probably want watermelon. Or jackfruit. Mm-hmm. Jackfruit's so good. I had a bunch yesterday. It's just I, I, so many people don't even know what it is, and I just think they're missing out. It's one of the most delicious fruits on earth. It's so good. It well, it's the largest fruit on the earth. Yeah, um, they're, they're wonderful. Well, they're becoming more popular. Even our local grocery store carries it now. I think before it was a um, it, it was a process of not being able to get them, and you know, people weren't talking about it. So you know, it was a cultural thing. Yeah. True. Yeah. Well, this has been amazing. I've loved having you on. Thank you so much for your time, for everything you've shared. And to end off, if you could please tell us where we, where everybody can find you and I'll link it down below. And then also if you have any closing words, anything inspiring that comes to mind, or maybe some inspiration for somebody out there who might not be feeling their best or their healthiest, and they're just looking for some encouragement or something like that. Well, Yes, you can follow me on Instagram, which I love Instagram, by the way, folks. I have people helping me with it, but you can go to Karen, K-A-R-Y-N, Calabrese. That's me on Instagram. And I guess they put my stuff on Instagram on Facebook too, but I'm on there. You can find me if you're in Illinois in Flossmoor. Uh, in Flossmoor comes a little shopping center out here, uh, 30, 3329 North Flossmoor. The restaurant will be open soon. You can come to my email and uh, get notices on different um, specials and things we're doing. I have a line of products. Oh, if you go to shopkarens.com, you can see my website. And I guess that's it. Would I have anything else? I mean, I have some other stuff, but I think it's on the website. They can tell you yeah. I'm not the media. I'm, I'm learning. Yeah. Oh, and my, my party words. I like to say everything if in a, any place I go, whatever I do is I like to remind people that if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given where you're going to live. Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. And I just want to say, I think it's amazing. You're opening a new restaurant at 75. I admire you so much. And I truly hope to be like you at 75 doing all these things. I think it's awesome. Don't hope to set the intention and do it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, (laughs) thanks again, Karen. I love you. You're awesome to the viewers. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did give it a big thumbs up right now, make sure you subscribe if you don't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.